Yeah. All right. Welcome back, Game Changers, Philly, South Jersey, Spain, Oklahoma, Florida. We're all over the place. So welcome on. So fun to see you guys. We did some positive focus off camera, but there's a lot of good energy on here today. Today, we're going to talk about what we need to be having in our business uh, in, this, in this market. And so, again, it's a mastermind. I got some stuff. I wrote it down that I want to talk about. But I want to hear from people, what's burning in your mind that, that is out that needs to be in? Anybody want to be brave? Raise your hand. Nobody? Nobody? See that? Oh. You know what? I was being a bad boy and I looked at a text. I apologize. I, but I'm raising, I'll raise my hand for anything. Hi, brother. I'll go after it. <laughs> oh, shoot. I denied somebody. I went to let her in. All right, cool. Go for it, Ed. What was the question? I was looking at a text, but I'm like, I'll no, raise no. Right, So the topic today is generally like, so I've got four or five things that I wrote down. Some of us from EXP con is like, what are the things that we need to be having in our business in this real estate market in order to excel, to increase our sales? Some of it's techie, right? Some are, some are like the widgets that we got to put into our business. Some of it's mindset. We've been hitting mindset really hard the last few weeks. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I, I've been accused that I talk a lot. <laughs> and so I wanted to leave the, open the floor for others to sort of, hey, what's burning in your desire to talk about? And, and then we'll, we'll, you know, slow it down. I'll jump in and hit my stuff. Cool. So if we don't have mindset, forget it. The game's over. So that's just, that, that is, that's not an option anymore. You don't have the mindset. You're, you're done. Just send your license back. I hate to be that, just, but that's it, man. But just simply what I'm seeing is old school plus new school. Doing the 500 foul shots a day, doing the lead generation, doing the connecting, video, uh, plus all of the stuff connecting with, for me, uh, I'm connecting with people that already have the AI set up, already have the webinar set up that I can invest in to bring great value to myself and us. So it's, there's only two ways to lead generate. We either have to invest our time or we have to invest money. I'm saying we got to do both. Yeah. That's what I, I'm saying, man. Yeah, and I, and technology is that other leverage point. Like that's, I said next to that guy, I give him kudos, Evan Novello. Thank you so much for just blowing my mind. Um, literally, I've, since I got back from EXP con, I've been sitting there just looking at his his social media game and his YouTube game and just rip off and duplicate, right? R and D, swipe and deploy. Like yeah. somebody and and it's it's sometimes you gotta hear it multiple times because I think uh, Tasha's on the call. Tasha, you mentioned Linktree on our call weeks ago. And it just whoop, in one ear, out the other. Didn't even didn't even hear it. And then Amanda mentioned it yesterday. And as I'm editing my video to put on, on social media, there, bright as day, is that guy Aaron had his link tree up there. And Chris and Holly, Chris and Kristen, you've got it on there. So who raise a hand? Who doesn't know what link tree is? Is it only me? <laughs> I'm the only one. All right, Nicole's raising her hand. Cool. Listen, it's something adds your social media uh, onto Instagram to have all your different links there. And, and I've seen people use it different ways. So Chris and Kristen, they've connected it to their KV core with their listings. Like Marcus, I see yours with it. Like, hey, schedule buyer consultation, seller consultation. That's another way to use it. But for all of you, like literally, Marcus, you can add your listings on there or add other people's listings on there for me, XP, because you have permission to do that. Right. For other people who are not using Linktree, like it's just another way to generate business. Right. That's the part that Ed's talking about. You got to have the mindset, but right. you also got to have the know how that's using the technology, investing some money in, in some of these platforms to drive business in a different way. And and Kristen, give me a second and then I'll, I'll turn to you because I know you said you wanted to ask a question. Um, when I sat down with Aaron, he told me that he spent $25,000 for a coach to learn how to do social media. 
In less than a year, the guy went from not having any video presence. He's a real estate coach. So I think he's got 14, 15,000 15, 14, 15, followers. Like that's a guy who's willing to invest in himself. Right. And learn from the top, top people on how, how to play the game the right way. Right. And he's got, you know, and on the ref share, he converted that into 197 agents in less than six months. Right. Wow. If you, if you guys remember the calculation, 197 agents on average, that's about, I don't know, three, four hundred thousand dollars potentially, depending on the mix. Not too shabby. Yeah. Yeah. Might, might be worth that twenty five thousand dollar investment. Right. Cool. Yeah, right. Can I go next? Yeah, please go. OK, go so um, I had a blast at EXP Con, guys. I learned so many um, good nuggets that I'll take with me and would love to start implementing in my business. Um, but to piggyback with Guillermo and, uh, Edward, like I really want to improve my social media presence specifically. I'm just on, what is it? IG face and Facebook. Um, but Guillermo, like what you said, I really, I came, I'm, I'm coming to a point where I really want to focus on improving that presence. So, um, I actually have a, a discovery call with, um, you guys heard of Ryan Pineda, right? I'm sure you did. So I have a discovery call with his team at 1 p.m. to see how I could um, change and revise my whole social social media presence. Sorry, social media presence. I'll let you know about that. But that's my number one thing right now is improving social media, uh, gaining followers, creating meaningful content. So I'll have um, eventually business will come out of it. You know what I mean? So that's my number one priority. Um, number two, how about this? Here's my struggle and again when you know this right now staying consistent in that um yeah so those are my uh top two things that i want to focus on uh right now in my immediate business yeah that that's awesome and, that's, and you for... know what guys um i don't know if you had a chance guillermo and anyone who went to exp con have you had a chance to talk to the chime folks i have not okay i have not you have something to share there? Yeah, they're um they're actually our preferred partners now. And Guillermo, I'll find out more because you know uh, with my full time gig at EXP. Anywho, um they I heard it's way better than KB Core, and um, they have AI built into it, stuff like that. I have a call with um the strategic director. Uh, when is it? Friday at two p.m. So I'll let you know the next meeting. Um, what I come up with, what he tells me. Awesome. Cool. All I have for now, guys, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, no, I'd love to hear back on that. And and yeah, I, I'm one of those guys that the best CRM is the one that you use. Yes. Right? So that's absolutely go deep on whatever it is. I don't have a horse in this race. Um, I just one of the things I, I'm mindful of specifically with CRMs because it's so disruptive your business when you move and change, is make sure that the change is worth it, right? Because us entrepreneurs, right, shiny, right. shiny squirrels, <laughs> like, oh cool, let's do that. Like literally just use it and go deep on it. I'm absolutely open to everything, but also the caution with entrepreneurs is, is just moving back and forth between CRMs because it's you lose all the content from and history uh, of, of your of your clients. So just make sure like I, I did it um, because the one that I was using when I looked at it against KB Core had not kept on developing was so back. And in, uh, in terms of from a techno technology standpoint, that it didn't keep up. That is where I was like, all right, it's missing all this stuff. It's been five years, six years that I've been in a CRM and it hadn't kept up with the industry standards. So just a uh, word of caution. But also, um, yeah. And, the, and then the other thing you mentioned, Christine, on social media. Right. The sound bite that I heard, okay. it's no longer social media, it's media. Right. Okay. It's it's literally the idea that we're sitting here taking pictures of our food, hanging out with our friends. That's not the power of using it anymore. It literally is media. It's how to get out there and leverage yourself, scale yourself, use technology to bring in business. So that's why I implore you guys go out there and say and kudos that you're you're going out and investing in yourself and reaching out to somebody who's walked the path before us and is going to teach you. That's the challenge. And so I'm actually um, looking at the guy who came on uh, at Rebs. It's, um, gosh, I'll find his name. 
Enzo Canado, Canada. He, he came on a revs, Chris. I think maybe you remember him. But I'm looking into his his his, his platform. Anyway, we'll share in our next mastermind what we discovered on the social media front. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Who else wants to share? I'll share. Nope. Um, I, I don't, I didn't really hear the, the initial question, but I think I know, you know, what sort of sets you apart in this market. Was that sort of the, the discussion or what can we yeah, do? And what things that we need to put in our, in, into our business to set us apart in this market, right? Right. So I think for us, I mean, there's a lot of like, you know, technology and all the things that we're talking about, but I think delivering a high level of customer service has always been, you know, delivering that Ritz Carlton like experience versus the best Western has sort of been, um, you know, where we can kind of hang our hat in terms of like, you know, the, like what we're delivering to our, to our customer. And then when, when they close that, you know, we're getting reviews and then we're sort of parlaying that into the technology and the, you know, social media and all of that. But I think um, we've really worked hard on, you know, delivering a five-star experience. And so, and that is translating into like Google reviews and, um, you know, people talking about us in the community. And so, you know, it's just, it's just, it's allowing for so much growth, I think. Um, and there's a book, what's the name of the book, Chris, that is it an awesome book? You're on mute. Uh, you, the gifting book you're talking about? Nope. That's a whole other piece of it. But um, it's the one that talks about like Disney World and their. Yeah, it's the Walt Disney customer experience or something like that. I... There's, um, there's Be Our Guest, one of them. Be Our Guest. I think that's yes. it. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Yep. So I think that's, you know, we've sort of like stayed consistent with that. And I think it's, it definitely translates into consistent business. What What are the three most important things along the lines there, Kristen, like that, that like are critical to be able that you need to have in order to deliver that, that high level customer service? Um, three most important communication, right? Okay. Um, Follow up and communication, I would say, are number one. But that's like that's par for the course. What do we think, girls? What, what do you mean by that? I was going to say over communicate and like really just holding their hand in the process. I mean, there's so many agents out there who are just like they yeah. think, like, okay, you're on a contract now. Like I can just give this to the title company to like manage for me, and it's like. So I'd say over communicate. I'd say going above and beyond. So I, I certainly think that's like when we, at the end of the day, when we close something, that's what we're hearing from our clients. Like you did this, you called this contractor, you figured this out for me. I mean, we've got a full-time operations person. So that makes it very easy for us to do that. Um, but, you know, even when I was a solo agent, that was sort of what I prided myself on. It was like when I was done with a transaction, it was like, wow, I really, you know, made did everything I could to make sure that we got to the table and to make sure that they felt like I was supporting them the whole time. Um, so I think going above and beyond and making them feel like you are like, wow, I didn't expect you to take care of this piece of it, but you are. Um, awesome. and yeah. Let, let me think, dig in deeper. Cause I, I, I am going to go to the front end of this, which I'm sure you do. And, and I'm going to use the same, same methodology that I use on the front end. What do you mean? by over communicate how how's that show up like what are you doing when you say over communicate so are you talking about before they're converted or after either one uh, let's say after they're converted yeah, yeah. okay um Oh my gosh. Well, it depends on if it's a, a buyer or a seller, but yeah, I mean, we are constantly in communication. We've got a process, a checklist, a timeline. We've got an email for every step of the transaction. They know what to expect. Um, you know, when they go under contract and m our two of our agents are on the call, Marissa and Jill, I think Marissa wanted to say something too, but um, you know, as soon as they go under contract, they know the expectations are set. Um, really in the beginning through a buyer consultation. So there's never a question like what's going to be the next step. It's like, here's what you can expect. Here's how I'll work for you. I'm going to be loyal to you. You're going to be loyal to me. And then this is how it's going to go from here on out. And then our operations person just kind of follows that, follows through with that throughout the process. Yeah, we have like 
for every step, we literally have a, a templated email. I mean, there's like probably like buyer or seller, there's probably like 30 emails from the beginning all the way to the end that they'll receive based on what's happening in the process. And on top of that, um, we'll actually send out buyers or sellers, like here's what happened last week in a bullet point them, and here's what's gonna happen this week. And like, they're never like wondering like what happens next, I'm on a contract, and now what? Right. I mean, and, and so like so much stuff comes out of it, right? Because I, I just, um, I've been putting my gear, my wisdoms out on social media, but one of them is conflict only arises in the absence of clear expectations, right? So that's literally the customer service delivery. If you lay out what to expect along the path, they're going to be thrilled, right? If you don't, then conflict arises and they're not going to be thrilled. So that that's literally the whole point of customer, high level customer service. If you just set the expectation up front, they're going to love you. And then you keep in communication, right? The other part that I'm hearing, like, man, I imagine people who do not have all this set up might be like, that's a lot of work, a template, an email, but it's also slow down to speed up, right? You say this stuff all the time anyway, but if you just slow down and actually write the email, create a template, save it so that going forward, like, cool, here it is when we go put it on the contract here's the all the things that every other buyer that i've ever worked with needs to know mm -hmm. and here's an email that has it all set up right because we have it on our, in our team as well but it's that slow down to speed up so great great i mean that that's why i'm asking you what do you mean by that because the devil's in the details and for the agents on our team or in our group here they're not part of a team or don't have their own team they don't know or may not know what that means to have that Ritz Carlton level experience or, 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 of, uh, of customer service and what it means to over communicate. I had a mentor when back in my lawyer days who, and it's a game, right? This is the game that I play with all the time. If my client has to reach out to me before I reach out to them with an answer on something, I've lost. Right. Literally, I've lost that game. That's the game you all need to be playing in any market, but especially in this market, right? Let me repeat that. If my client reaches out to me to ask me for something before I've delivered it, I've lost the game. Right? That's the level of customer service you need to have. And by the way, you guys, Chris and Kristen, you, you probably only know how to deliver this incredible Ritz Carlton level of experience if you truly know what your client's goals are, right? I've had way too many conversations lately with agents saying, hey, I don't know why my buyer is not buying. I don't know why this list is not listed selling. And I got to tell you at the heart of it is because we didn't ask the right questions up front and unco truly uncover what our client's motivation and goals are because we did then we can ask them to take action in alignment with those goals. And there are three questions that I ask up front. Anybody want me to go through that? Yes. Up front. All right. So the first one is like, hey, what's your goal? <laughs> like, literally, agents won't go like, they'll walk into it like, cool, I got a list of appointment. They won't ask the simple question like, hey, why are you selling or why do you want to buy? All right. So that that's number one. Like I would say 80 to 90% of us don't even ask that. But let's say the rest of it, we say we do ask that question, right? Then the second question is when they say, hey, I want to sell. I just use an example because I've been using this one for a while. I want to sell because I'm commuting three hours each way every single day. Most of us will just stop right there and leave it at the rational, logical level. We got to ask the question, all right, why is that important to you? Or what does that mean? And you might have noticed I asked Kristen, like, hey, what do you mean over communicate? What do you mean by hand holding? Because what something means to me may be completely different to the person that's across from me on the other side of the table. Like sell quickly. What's that mean to you? Right? Or what do you mean? Like what why is that important to you? Is another one of those questions that you want to ask. Why is it important to you? to save three hours each way. And then once you uncover, and you might have to ask that like two or three times, like, cool, um, why is it important to you save three hours a day? All right, well, I, you know, because I'm not seeing my kids, I'm not spending enough time for my with my kids. 
It's like, oh, what do you what do you mean? Why why is that important? Like, well, I missed the first step. I missed their their uh first little league game. It's like, how would that change your life? That's the last question. Like, if you're able to save those three hours a day and spend time with your kids, how will that change your life for the better? Right? Because now we're not keeping it on the logical, rational level. We're getting down to the emotional level. People take action on emotion. Right? And in the, in the, I'm using the example because this was a real life example of one of my clients early on in my career. And I was like, well, how will that change your life? You're like, you know what? Because I will fulfill my, my promise to myself, he said to me, of being a better father than, than my father was to me. Now, when we get to the inspection stage and that person is fighting over $50 curtains and ready to crater a $500,000 transaction over $50, do you think it might be helpful to know what his true motivation is? <clears throat> right? Because then I could say, and I did, like, hey, man, I'll fight you the nail for you over this $50. But early on, you told me the most important thing for you is to sell this house so you could be spend more time with your kids, be a better father than your father was. So again, I'm, I'm with you, man. I'll fight either one you want, $50 or this. You are the one that has to tell me which one you care about more. That $50 ended, right? That conversation ended, closing happened. Now there's been closings where I didn't uncover that information and they went poorly. This is the example where it went well. And at the end of the day, it's not about selling houses. We are dream makers. The dream for a lot of people is to sell their home and move on to the next phase of their life. Other people buy their dream home. If you believe that you are a dream maker rather than a, a person who sells houses, then it, it empowers you to ask those questions at a deeper level and then ask them to take action in alignment with their goals. This is not pushy, right? Because a lot of agents feel like I'm not going to ask them to give up that 50 bucks because I'll, I'll seem pushy. I'll seem like I'm the guy who only cares about my commission. However, if you know the true goals and the history goes like you want to be a better father to these kids, is that pushy? To be like, I didn't say it, but the reality underlying of the way I said it was like, dummy, $50 is not worth this. Right, creating this five hundred thousand dollars transaction. You said you want to be a better father. Be a better father. Give him the fifty bucks and go and move on. I didn't say it that way, but he knew what that what what the conversation was underneath there. And if I needed to say it that way, I think I could have said it that way. Right. God asks deeper questions, and to deliver that that Ritz Carlton service. They, they're doing it instinctively. They're not doing it. Right. Like they're asking, they know their clients' true goals at the end of the day. Because we human beings will get in our own way. We will self-sabotage. Yeah. Guillermo, can I share something real quick? What I heard from Alex Hormozzi and Ed, uh, Ed Milet. Absolutely. Yeah. And Kristen, thanks for bringing this up, man. It's, it's a great uh, like awakening and reminder when our clients say yes to the listing in the next 24 hours their brain is searching for confirmation of either they made the right decision or the wrong decision so we're trained to go for the yes go for the yes go for the yes go for the close whatever it is that's just the start of the transaction that's just the start of the communication and we we will lose big time if in the next 24 to 48 hours we are triple 10 xing their confirmation that they unequivocally made the best decision and with that those 50 dollar issues that come up down the road aren't even an issue and the next thing is when i hear about technology anymore technology to me is what is the system that's going to put appointments in my calendar who do I hire? What do I pay? What's it? If it's not putting appointments on my calendar, I have zero interest in it. I don't want to hear about any more. You go here, you click this, and then you know how much does it cost? What's the investment? Will I wake up three weeks from now, two weeks from now, next week with appointments in my calendar? 
that's the way I'm talking to my team and the people that I coach. What is that system that puts appointments in my calendar? And they're out there. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I love that because that's literally my brain around social media. I have resisted it. I, I have I'm be vulnerable right now. Like, I don't know it. I was belly to belly networking, coffees, lunches, dinners. That's how I grew up. That's how I built my real estate business. So using social media is not my comfort zone. It's not what I love to do. It's not what I like to do, but I do like to teach. And so that gives me a platform to get out to more people. So use whatever conversation you need to create in your, main, in your mind, right? And this is important to your point, Ed, put more appointments in my calendar to help more people, right? Absolutely. So we got to learn it. If you're if you're like me and that's not your deal, let's be accountability partners and let's let's get going. Let's get it the right way. All right? Because again, I'll be vulnerable. I did videos for a year on my YouTube channel. I didn't didn't do what I wanted to do because I was just doing it the wrong way. Right? I didn't find the person who can help me. So now I am going to. Right? Because I saw somebody else. I saw two people. There's another guy who started in January. January. He's got 5,000 followers on, on YouTube and did 190,000 GCI just off of direct YouTube leads. You know, he's using it to drive sales. This was an EXP agent, Guillermo? Yeah. Um, nice. I reached out to him. I'm, his name's escaping me, but if you guys talk, I'll find his name and you guys can follow him. Actually, like it wasn't the XP con. It was an XP agent, but he was a mem he was a guest on our Rebs training. So if you look back two or three trainings, it was how to be a YouTube um uh grow your YouTube sales. He was the guy who ran it. And I'll find his name for you. Who else wants to share why I look for this? Come on, Tasha. Guillermo from the technological side i actually have a couple questions um i have a list of things from exp con and just from people that i talked to while we were there um opus clip was actually one that you mentioned um i don't know who else uses it um if you can maybe share a little bit about that because that's one of the things that i plan to look into before the end of the week um many chat for Instagram and Facebook was um, mentioned a couple times at EXPCon actually, and I didn't know if anyone on the call has used it, has tried it, has any info. Um, the next one is a question that I have. We had talked about this a little bit. There is an off-market listing app um, within EXP. I could not remember the name to save my life. I don't know if anyone does that they can remind me what that is. Um, and then the last one is, has anyone used EXP's AI Luna to help them at all with setting up, you know, campaigns, anything like that? All right. I can hit a couple of those very quickly. So Jonathan Alexander first is the YouTube guy um, at EXP. Um, Opus AI, I got to give Ed Fordyce kudos he he turned me on to that back in a uh, shareholder xp share, shareholder and yeah man i just i just described i got 2400 hours for like 100 bucks where they'll just take my youtube just let me take your youtube youtube link drop it in and it'll just create a bunch of shorts for you so like i don't know i drop these sessions i actually drop them into into the the, the uh, Opus AI or Opus Pro, and it'll create a bunch of shorts and it'll rank it, right? It'll go like, this one's 99, score's got a good hook, it's got a good story, it's got a good call to action, right? Because that's the flow. If you guys haven't done the Kanata training that we did at Revs on short, how to do shorts, um, it was last spring summit. Take a look at that one, right? But that's, that's the flow, right? You gotta have your hook, you gotta have your story, your opinion, and then you have a call to action. And so that does it for you automatically, has all the stuff written in on, on, underneath um, the subtitles, and then you can post it. Um, Ed, Ed, did you want anything? add anything more on that, the Opus one? It's funny, I'm just looking at something right now. I forgot to upload a um, YouTube video, but it's opus.pro. Uh, at least that's where I went. And it's really simple. 
Um, and it, and it, what I like is it forced me to work on my YouTube channel because opus.pro will, at least for now, will only work with uh, a YouTube link. And by the way, you can use other, other uh, YouTube links. It doesn't just have to be yours. I mean, I've done it with Tony Robbins, Ed Milet, uh, Mel Robbins. You can do it with other, it doesn't have to be you. But what I love is it is simple. There, there's something that is re-tattooed in my brain. Complexity is the enemy of execution. If it's not easy, I ain't doing it. I'm just, I'm just not doing it. So complexity is the enemy of execution. Opus.pro, I think you can actually start it for free. Uh, I think my subscription is 15 bucks a month, but it's you just click it, drop it, and it will create, the AI creates, the most viral shorts from the content that you download in it based on the words, the hook, the delivery, and it will rank that rank. Like if you get a 99% rank, it's saying this has a really good chance of being seen and going viral. It is so phenomenal. I, I, I had one like that. And it's the first one that had over a thousand views ever. And it was the one with uh, Tasha. That I just posted, Tasha, where you where you went into that, and so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be putting you guys out of it. But like, it it was the first one that got me over a thousand views in my history. So thank you, Tasha. Um, but yeah, I know that the Opus. What else did you say that I had a thought about? Oh, so it is free, and I used a free one under multiple Gmail accounts because you can link your Gmail account. Until I was like, all right, I'm committed to using this, and I just signed a subscription. So you can go free for a while. Like, I think they give you a couple hundred hours of free stuff. And then I just used it all. I'm like, well, I don't want to keep on switching Gmail accounts. Yeah, uh, what I, would say is I know Sean's got a question. Yeah, just, what's up, Sean? Just go, just go ahead and do it. Like, just, just start well, playing around with it. You can't go wrong with it. You can't make a mistake because the technology takes care of all of our mistakes. Just do the YouTube video. If you need help, by the way, if you don't know how I say that, if you don't know how to do that, I'm not an expert, but just give me a shout. We'll do a Google Meet. I'll just show you how to do it. Go ahead, Sean. Oh, yeah. I'm like new to YouTube. I have to start a whole new channel because my old one is literally just all my kids doing their own videos and they make no sense. Like if you Google it, it's like my daughter when she's like five showing her dolls. Um. So I need a whole new one. But with those YouTube shorts, like I'll see them pop up like on my Instagram reels or on Facebook. Now, can you integrate that into your other social media platforms? Those shorts? Okay. All right. I just didn't know. That was my yeah, question. That's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. So what happens is you you uh, copy the link, put it in opus.pro, hit create video in anywhere from two to 20 minutes, depending on how long the video is. Uh, and by the way, you don't have to create short videos. I, I video my Facebook lives and then upload that to face. So that's like 30 minutes long sometimes. Yeah. You'll get an email saying, here are your clips. And it's, it breaks everything down into anywhere from, 38 second shorts or 38 second videos with the transcriptions, by the way, to maybe a two and a half minute clip. Takes so they care pick the ones that they think are going to go the most viral. Okay. Cool. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Um, the other questions that you had exclusive listings. So this was a big announcement at EXPCon. So again, it's just like the, the, the great things about EXP just get greater um, because we are, it, our structure is what it is. Um, we can do things in, in a better way than, than our competition, right? So what that means for exclusive listings, we have a platform now where we can share coming soon or if, if clients like to have things off market, which they do, I, I have that from time to time. 
that you can have that that group of listens internally at exp and we can share that information ahead of time before it hits the market legally right um the way it's done legally is that you have to do it within your office the thing about exp is that we are a very large office right <laughs> so we've got all thousands and thousands of people could share that information and so the app um you should have all received an email um called exp exclusive listings but the app is zenlist home search i don't know if you guys see that and that's gonna that's to white it out um but it's zenlist home search if you guys have a problem finding it let me know and i can email you the exclusive e exp exclusive listings that went out uh sign up for that uh, there's also so many other things that came out. The the XP uh, bundle, where where you can actually go out and sign up companies as sort of a uh, employee benefits, and then refer those people who are moving in and out of those companies as referral fees for your for you. And you just got to have this robust referral fee uh, business. So take take a look at all that stuff that's being put out. Um, what was the other question you had? Many chat that one I don't know. Yes, uh, just wondering if anyone's used it. It's something I put on my list as something to check out before the end of the week. Um, but I didn't know if anyone else has tried it before. Anybody? No. No. Sorry, I'll, I'll start and, and ask us that one. I have to look into that one. Tasha, a mini meaning M I N I, or many M A N Y. Oh, M A N Y. Okay, I'm gonna look that too okay all right we're we'll looking that and we'll, we'll all report back next week um cool i think that's all i had <laughs> that was a lot. No, i apologize the last one uh ai luna did we talk about that one? Oh yeah okay so i didn't write that one down but yeah i've only used it to ask me ask them what my rev share check was going to be for the month that's the only way i'm <laughs> So that's the example they used, and that's the only thing I've actually done. Um, I don't know. Here's what I heard from somebody. And again, this is complete um, conversation in a hall, no authority from the whoever told me. It was like basically Luna was sort of when they announced it way back when, and the shareholder was like sort of child level. Now it's sort of like, yeah, or baby level. Now it's toddler level. They're working to get it sort of the teenager level where you can use it to create campaigns and things of that sort. So right now it's more to utilize, navigate internally, like who do I talk to to get this resource at EXP that rather than, you know, maybe you don't want to go into the world, but you're offsite and can't get into the world. Um, that's my understanding of sort of where it's at and it's, it's level of development. But to think about where it was from shareholder, which was back in March, April to like october and now it's doing you know more robust things i can't imagine by the time we, we roll around this time next year it's going to be a major advantage for us internally as 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 exp agents cool. isn't that kind yeah. of like what compass has with their like exclusive listing thing platform the um yeah. The Zenless home search. I I imagine that it is, except they, you know, arguably we were we're bigger, right? I yeah. mean, right. Yeah, yeah but I mean, from a recruiting standpoint too. I mean, that's something now that EXP offers that they weren't before, correct? Absolutely. So that that right. is the thing. It's like we now have this feature, and as well as the fact that it's more robust. You know, there, there was a great economics report put out um, by Michael Deprete, Del Prete. Um, you guys need to be watching that video and, and it shows where we are stacked up versus the industry, how innovative we are, how disruptive we are, and how we are the we are the present and the future. There's just no there's no arguing the data. And it's really empowering because it's not just EXP agents saying it. Now it's a respected industry stand. Somebody out there doesn't have a horse in the race. Just love the data, analyze it. It's like, yeah, it's a Netflix versus Blockbuster moment. And so, yeah, you look at the number of agents that, that Compass has versus the number of agents that we have, and then we've got this technology tool. Like by virtual numbers, we're going to have more access to more stuff. Right? 
Hey, Tasha, you had a question? Um, yeah, sorry. Sean, I think in direct answer to your question, Guillermo, the point that really stuck to me was even though Compass may have it, it's still within their brokerage um, because of their business design. So the real difference with EXP is EXP is one brokerage nationwide slash worldwide. So we get to share a lot more information through a much larger expanse than anyone within a specific Compass office. Right. That's awesome. I didn't I never realized that Compasses was just like office specific. This being well, nationwide is huge. That's it, huge. It, it, I understood. It is. You know, I think Compass it. is sort of one company as well, but they're only 24,000 agents. We are 90,000 agents. Right. So if you have, you know, a friend that lives in Oklahoma, um, you're able to like, and this is strictly for off market, not listed. This is exclusive listed off market as I understand it. Again, okay. as okay. It, it was, you know, it was announced. There's, I'm sure, more devils, more details, <laughs> not devils, more details, uh, devils in the details, but more details uh, out there that we need to unpack and understand. That's awesome. Yeah. Is this kind of like a wholesaler off market thing, or is it just like exclusive? It's just like, exclusive. Really? We, again, you know, until the coming soon, until they they can be. There's rules about coming soon and, and marketing it publicly, right? So you've got to do it within your office only, as I as I understand it. Again, I'm not I'm not the broker. I don't profess to be the broker. So, you know, go talk to your broker. <laughs> that's the, that's the, the legal caveat here. Um, but my understanding is because of our our unique structure, we're able to have more eyes on it because of the nature of who we are, right? Yeah. But I it's not. I think the other piece of that is like as a group at some point, maybe we should, you know, I don't know what this platform will look like, but I know, you know, my office here and we share exclusive listings with each other all the time, right? right. The, the state of the market, the way things have been, it's just, I mean, and we'll sell stuff off market to each other if, and if that's allowed. Yeah. Um, so I think the whole, you know, the nationwide exclusive platform will be great. But I think as a group, you know, as we grow and I'd love to see like so much participation here, I think we could benefit from starting to share some of that. You know, I, I was with Compass before here. So um, so they did that in terms of like, I guess they had a platform at some point. I, I would, didn't really maybe that came after we left, but um, they would sit once a week or once every other week and we would they would share an exclusive listing list. Um, and so everybody would have access to that before the, it hit the market. So that might be something to think about. So if, if everybody's really interested in that, I'll learn more about it. And uh, and maybe I can even share it as sort of our process, as part of mm -hmm. our process. Hey, here's, here's the exclusive listens list. Um, and maybe circulate around or maybe just share my screen for, for a minute or so. Yeah, the way Compass did it, and I'm assuming EXP will do it, is it was just on their website. If you just go to compass.com, it was like, just like any web search, home searching site, you can just select exclusive, you know? Yeah. So that, that's where, and we, and they were allowed, and I guess now EXP can, on our, I mean, we can now do that, upload a home to this website so it's searchable by any consumer just yeah. going to the EXP home searching site. Good stuff. I imagine that's exactly what it is, Chris, and, but it's got an app associated with it. Cool. Time just flies by. What else we got? Mark, Ed, you gonna say something? Yeah, quick question. Things that are uh, seem um, very obvious to me. I'm, I'm recognizing that uh, a couple of KW agents that I've been talking to as well as one that indirectly just joined us. Does everybody know the difference, and it's okay if you don't, the difference between profit share and revenue share? If somebody doesn't know the, the difference, just sort of raise your hand or speak up. Okay. Don't raise your hand, yeah. All right, so just- uh, I always kind of thought they were the same same thing. Yeah. They're, like I thought KW called it profit share. Yeah. And EXP calls it rev share, but I thought it was kind of the same thing. The Thanks, for, levels. Thanks for speaking up, man. Mm -hmm. um, a couple things, the easiest way, and this is where 
I would say don't get into the weeds with this with a a potential partner. Pull me, Guillermo, Lars, somebody into the conversation. But this is the simplest way that I can explain it. Profit share is not predictable. Revenue share is 100% predictable. I don't know what my profit share is going to be next month. Let me put it this way. If I have a capper that caps in one month with KW and a capper in my rev share that caps in one month, I can tell you exactly what my rev share is going to be here. I cannot tell you what my profit share is going to be. The, the, the equations are completely different. It's literally bananas and hippopotamuses. It's not even, they're both not even in the fruit category. They're like yeah. two different things. Yeah, if I can add to that too, like Ed, you're saying like, it's very specific, it's published. Like an agent closes a home under you, you get this percentage, whatever. It just is what it is. Where KW, I always explain it, it's like, yeah, well, that the team leader who runs that office, you know, it's the profit after, you know, all their expenses after their, you know, you know, the dinners they, you know, they take their favorite agents out to and the bar tabs at the end, like, you know, however much that person spends, it's what's left after that. And then they say you get a percentage of that where we're getting a percentage of an actual closing. Thousand percent, man. Yeah. You know, what? it's funny. I'm, I'm trying to think about a good analogy for people to understand and like profit share like it's almost like you sell a house right you get your commission in but there's a bunch of stuff that gets subtracted from that right and probably not a good example because you can really take a lot more off a, a, a market center but like so you got your commission you got to pay your broker you got to pay your signs your blocks your your your, your lock box uh marketing uh your referral fee to the other guy from oklahoma that sent you the referral your taxes to Uncle Sam. By the end of it, at that commission, you got a little bit left over, right? Rev share is the commission. Nothing subtracted from it. You know what it is? Three percent of a five hundred thousand dollar home, right? It's fifteen grand. End of story. And for those that that are finance or study finance. Um, again, that Michael DePrete talks about EBITDA, adjusted EBITDA. You can make a PL look whatever way you want. Right? You can make it look profitable or not so profitable. And I'm not saying people are purposely making it look unprofitable. I am. That's a softball. Just left it. Ed. <laughs> I am. Yeah. I'm the way saying. I've heard it, the, the way I've heard it is. Uh, rev share is the top line number, and then profit share is the bottom line number. Just right. kind of for that. Yeah, um, there's a lot of voodoo that can happen in between that and that. So I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, th th there's a reason people are 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 coming, right? Awesome, awesome stuff. I, I honestly, guys, I love, I love our, our, our meetings here. Thank you so much for, for attending. I appreciate every single one of you. Let's keep on even more people coming on every single week. Uh, let's remind our, our folks out there because we're sharing knowledge, right? Not, not everybody knows everything here. Like this many chat. I want to know about that. Like, I don't know that about that stuff. So, um, thank you so much. Go out there, cause and create miracles. I appreciate you all.